Uh, what about this picture? The title, Breakfast at Tiffany. I thought Tiffany was a Julia's shop. Yes, well, it is. And uh, the title comes from the fact that this girl gets a great lift and, and uh, fun out of walking down Fifth Avenue at the crack of dawn with a breakfast which she's bought in a drugstore what sort and of a... looking in the window at Tiffany's. What sort of a girl is she? She's a, what they call in America these days, a kook. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Spelt with a K, a... I believe. <laughs> which is a dizzy, gay type of girl. Anything like yeah. you? I'm not quite that way, no. <laughs> The voice that you just heard was that of Audrey Hepburn in an interview about her role in the 1961 film Breakfast at Tiffany's, which was directed by Blake Edwards and also starred George Peppard and was adapted from the 1958 novel of the same name, which was authored by Truman Capote. So, what do you get when you mix a clueless socialite, a broke writer and a nameless cat? A shitty rom-com. Breakfast at Tiffany's is the story of Holly Golightly, a New York party girl who lives in a tiny apartment with no furniture, no keys. She likes to shop at Tiffany's and visit her mobster friend in jail, flirt with rich men and be a bit of a slut. She meets Paul Varjak, a wannabe writer who lives upstairs and is paid by some sort of sugar mama. Paul falls head over the hills for Holly, but she has other ideas. She wants to marry Jose, a wealthy South American chap. But things get messy when Holly is accused of being a drug dealer's accomplice. Jose dumps her immediately and Holly decides that she's just going to run away to Brazil anyway and by herself. Paul tries to stop her, but she says no and tosses the cat out of the window and fox off. Then changes her mind after Paul chases her down, finds the cat again, then tells Holly he loves her. She changes her mind and kisses him in the rain. They live happily ever after with the cat. The end, pretty much. Breakfast at Tiffany's, in a nutshell, a shitty rom-com and the subject of today's podcast. Hello and welcome to the Adapted to Screen podcast, a podcast where we take a piece of text, whether it be a book or screenplay or some shit, and we compare it with its on-screen counterpart, whether that be a TV series or a film. In this case, it's Breakfast at Tiffany's, a book and a film, and we're going to talk all about it. And with me to talk all about it, I have with me, as always, Philip McCulloch. How are you? You are muted, my friend. (laughs) <laughs> Richie the body how are you <laughs> I'm good man I'm good I'm good I'm good I'm good thank you for joining me this evening even though you forgot I did yeah but you know I was I was close to everything so it's all good yeah, but you were still good. here within five minutes so I'm a legend I can't That's complain why, yeah, yeah no, I'm a legend. absolutely absolutely so yes I trust everything is well with you yeah, no, no, uh, all's good. Uh, very busy at the moment, you know, traveling and stuff. But yeah, everything else is cool. Yourself? Yeah, all good, thank you. Can't good, complain. Good, good. Very, very much the same, very busy. Uh, so, Phil, breakfast at Tiffany's is what we're yes. doing today. I think, was it your idea? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, because you said you said you wanted to do something all romantic and, and, and the stuff you put forward was a load of bollocks. So, you know, this way I get to see George Peppard and Audrey Hepburn, don't I? And, and okay. it's only 160 pages. I didn't want to read 350 pages of romance drivel, in all fairness. No, no. I, uh, you say I, it was because I wanted to do something romantic. You did? It's not because I wanted to. I just felt we should. Because, I mean, yeah, we, we, we might have a, a, a variety of people out there listening listening to the podcast and some people might like rom-coms or just romantic films and we need to cater for everyone i think i've done it now that's it yeah i don't think we should do another one fucking hell no. <laughs> jesus christ well, at least not one from the 50s i think you described it as a rom-com it's not a romantic comedy at all is it no it is supposed to be a romantic comedy is it really yeah yeah I yeah would... it's supposed to be a rom-com i would have put it down as a drama oh it was just it was definitely not funny so where was the comedy except for all the racist bits <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly oh my god it's, it did not age well did it this film no oh to be fair there were some bits in the book that even made me go fuck it yeah. out yeah no yeah yeah definitely there, I think there's a bit where uh, she, she has a, an, 
someone come and stop with her and she says uh, she's not a lesbian but she is stupid which is just as good oh, <laughs> you can't say that <laughs> well, well no I was thinking of the N word was that used in the book uh, I heard the audio book version uh, so they might they might have they not put that, that in I, yeah they would have cut that yeah no she um, ah. uh, it's when it's when Paul goes uh, she invites Paul to the thingy and he meets OJ Berman and uh or drip and says, uh, "Can you lock me a cigarette?" But don't let him do it. He's got end lips. Oh, yeah. Is it in the film? No, it's in the book. Okay, so it's not all drip. And there says it. Holly go lightly says it. Yes, Holly go lightly says it. Yes. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. So the audio books do differ from the uh, the actual books then. Oh, we've discussed that before. They definitely do. I don't know why, but they definitely do. Well, obviously, I can understand in that case, but um, other cases, I don't understand. Like, I think when we um, when we did the unreleased uh, Tommy Knockers, there was lots of differences. Like, I mean, lots. It's like to to the point of why have you why have you done that? Like changing the name of the dog and changing like things that they actually say. Like, why you're just saying words? It's just like easier just to say what's in print than just make it up yourself as you go along. But okay, whatever. Yeah. So with this one, what, what, where are we going to start then? For we're going to start with the uh, the author. Do you want to start yeah. with the author's bump? Okay. Okay. Author's bump. Okay. So Truman Garcia Capote, born Truman Streckfus Persons, person, person, persons, born Pearson? in September. No, there's no A. So it's definitely Persons. Uh, September the 30th, 1924, and died in August the 25th, 1984. Was a novelist, screenwriter, playwright, and actor. Several of his short stories and novels and plays have been praised as literary, literally easy for me to say, classics, including the novella Breakfast at Tiffany's, In Cold Blood, Other Voices, Other Rooms, Random House, and Miriam. That In Cold Blood that I mentioned, I did start reading that. It's a it's, it's a true account of a multiple murder and its consequences, which was published in 1965. So I actually may go back and read that because I brought it because it came with Breakfast at Tiffany's. So I might have a little read back through that. But if I can find, here we go. Discography. Discography. What's he got here? Hundreds and thousands. He started publishing in 1945 and his last bit of work was the early well 2015 the early stories of Truman Capote was published by a random house 14 previously unpublished stories when he was a teenager uh, discovered in the New York Public Library archives in 2013 okay lovely yeah have you read any of his other works uh, no Are you going to yeah, well, I've got that in cold blood, so I definitely give that a read, and I might have a look at the grass harp as well because it sounds okay. Other than that, now you usually do this film trailer thing in oh, every yeah. episode. Now the voice that you usually use, which uh, you said was the hooded claw last time yes. from uh, Danger Bay, it's not. It's, it was Doctor Claw. Doctor Claw. Oh, oh, was it Doctor Claw? Was it Doctor Doct- Claw? Yeah. Who, who, who Doct- was the Claw. hooded? That was a different cartoon. No, that was uh, no, uh, from Inspector Gadget, not Danger Mouse. Did I say Danger Mouse? You did I say Danger Mouse. I Inspector Gadget. Yeah. Okay, I'll allow it. But the hooded claw was. What was the hooded claw for? Oh, was he in Wacky Races? Wacky Races. Yeah. No flies on me, baby. Right. So yeah, uh, you usually do that voice, and I don't think that's going to fit this trailer because you're going to make Breakfast at Tiffany sound like a horror film or something. Well, it 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 it, sh- it was wasn't it let's face it it was an absolute fucking <laughs> horror so it's like yeah no well we should just we should just stick to it okay then should, should you have a, a little bit of something to throw together for our trailer uh yeah i've got i've got the description right here yeah okay okay take it away phil a young new york socialite becomes interested in a young man who's moved into her apartment building but her past threatens to get in the way there you go pretty much what i said at the starting but in fewer words yeah and it, and it does sound rather sinister when you put it like that doesn't it, <laughs> it does, yeah <laughs> he will stop at nothing to destroy her and it was at this point during the edit i decided i was gonna have a go at the trailer also because that sounded a bit intense and dramatic so i thought i'd try my hand at it so this is what i came up with 
She is Holly Golightly, a dazzling socialite who loves breakfast at Tiffany's. He is Paul Vizak, a struggling writer who falls head over heels for her charm and her beauty. Will they find true love or will their secrets tell them apart? Don't miss the romantic comedy of the year starring Audrey Hepburn and George Peppard. Breakfast at Tiffany's, coming to a theater near you. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Mm, it was, um, um, it was a bit. It was a, the book was a little bit more dark than the film. Well, it wasn't dark. It was. Um, it wasn't as um, chirpy as the film. No, it was. It was miserable. Uh, and I think the problem is that I found I found it very difficult to shake that off when I was watching the film because I'd already made my mind about Holly Go Lightly. I thought she was a right slag and wanted her dead within the first five minutes. And I knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I, I had a complete different picture of Holly Golightly from the book. She, to me, she came across more pompous, more upper self, more self-indulged. She, she was more of a, a narcissist. Whereas the, the Holly Golightly in the film seemed like the person who wanted to be that person but wasn't. And she tried to put on a bit of a pretense, a bit of a face, a bit of a mask. She wasn't that way, but she wanted people to think she was. But yet and no, listen, right, she was putting herself in danger from the first second of the book where that geezer comes home with her and he's like, Bab, I've paid for you, I've paid for your pals, I've paid the powder room, what are you saying? And she's going, yeah, do one, mate. So how many other geezers is she doing that to every day? Yeah, like I said in the intro, a slut. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. One question, the question I've got that maybe our four listeners could answer is... What go on with the powder room? I understand the powder room's like a toilet and stuff, but why are men paying her like 50 quid to go to the pack? I don't get that. Like, what's the I'm score? thinking it's a fifth, like a $50 note or something, maybe. And, but she never and, gives it them back. Yeah, she's rolling it up. She never gives it back. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I did wonder that, though. Why Why would you take $50 to the to the bathroom? The only thing, because in the movie, when the party's going on and they're leaving through the back door, through the bathroom window, he's in the bathroom with that chick, like, in the bath, smooching. And I don't know whether that is what it is. I'll give you 50 quid and we can go and smooch or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It must be a thing that happened in the in the 50s, but I don't actually know. And you know when they say, I'm going to go and powder my nose? Was that, yeah. Did they mean makeup or did they mean, I'm just going to go and have I've got some packet. I've got a gram, I'm just going to go and powder my nose. Well, I would imagine that they actually meant, like, reapply their makeup. But then again, it could be snowing in San Diego, couldn't it? I'm looking through the internet trying to get an answer to this why she was getting her $50. Oh, Holly was simply fleecing men for their cash, ostensibly to pay the toilet room attendant. But in reality, she was pocketing the money and using it to pay her rent and living expenses. $50 for in 1950 odd for a toilet attendant. That's a week's wage. pay that now? No. Fucking give, hell. The jiggy jiggy man, you give him a quid, don't you? Don't give him fuck all. Well, but actually, to be fair, uh, I haven't been out in like a pub in like a town centre for a very long time. Do the jiggy men still? Well, if they do, I still won't give them 50 quid. No, a quid. In, in 2023, let alone 1961 <laughs> or 1959 when the book was written. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But can we move on? Because I'm bored of that already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to move on to next? Um, uh, well, we'll just do the cast very cast, quickly. Yeah. Okay, so the cast of the 1961 movie Breakfast at Tiffany's starred Audrey Hepburn as Holly Go Lightly, George Peppard as Paul Varjak, loads of other people you would never have heard of, and Mickey Rooney as the very racist Mr. Unioshi. Yeah, I mean, even I was offended at that. <laughs> I just thought, couldn't they just get a Japanese man to do it? <laughs> then maybe they did try getting one in, and I looked at him and went, "Oh no, you're not stereotypically a Japanese man. We need somebody who's stereotypically a Japanese man." And they, they did that. Oh, it was ridiculous. I bet he regretted shocking. that for the rest of his days. Probably yeah, did and actually. As soon as I, as soon as I saw it, I never knew where the scene came from in the the film Dra uh, Dragon. The Bruce Lee story. Oh, yeah, you yeah, see, yeah. You see Bruce Lee in the cinema. 
Oh, and, um, and he walks out, that doesn't he? On, and he walks yeah. out, and it's that scene. And I, I, I didn't. I thought that scene was just made up for that film, but it's from the. It's from mm. Breakfast at Tiffany's. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, no, I remember that film. I remember uh, the when he was working. Uh, he was working in the kitchen, and I think he was talking about going. He's like, I want to go to college, and I want to get married, and blah blah blah. And she went, uh, Well, you can do that if you. His boss, well, you can do that if you want, and then you'll fail, and you'll come back here because we always need a good dishwasher. <laughs> I might have to cut that out. <laughs> no, because no, 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 that's, no. That's what. That's, that's exactly what, that's how what, she says. Yeah, that's exactly how she says it. A good dishwasher. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was. It wouldn't have been offensive at the time. It'd have been. Oh no! Of course, while well within its while well within its parameters, I'm very surprised that the cancel culture of today hasn't got round to breakfast at Tiffany's yet. And oh, tried they've to, got they've got so. better things to deal with. They've got Russell Brand to deal with this weekend. Now you know what I mean. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, to be to be honest, the Russell Brand thing. I mean, why is it taking so long? I've watched some of the stuff he's done, and I felt molested by him just by <laughs> watching it. <laughs> <laughs> like, how yeah. how has he not got, how has he not been brought up on charges yet? No, well, you know, you have friends in places do look after you, don't you? I guess. Well, I, this is why I can't become famous because some cunt's going to come out of the woodworks and try and screw oh, me over. Mate, I've got more skeletons in a graveyard in my closet. Let's just keep it at that. Let's just keep it to the four listeners that we've got, shall we? <laughs> okay, uh, mind you, yeah. mind you, it'd be a good boost for the ratings, eh? Well, yeah, true. Any publicity and all that. So, right. Yes, so that was the cast. So we're into the differences. Oh, no, actually, my question first. Richie, had you ever seen Breakfast at Tiffany's before? No, I never saw it. I knew of it. I knew that everybody knows the name Breakfast at Tiffany's. They know it's a book. They know it's a film. But I never watched it. I never intended on watching it. I never thought it would ever... I just never thought I'd ever watch it. Mm -hmm. And here we are. What about about you? Uh, I watched it in my early 20s. I only watched it. I think because I realised that George Peppard was in it and Breakfast at Tiffany's being like the big, like, you know, the big, not phenomenon. You know what I mean? Everyone talked about it. and A it classic was ha- is what it was called. Do they still call it a classic? Of course they do, yeah. They haven't changed their mind yet. Uh, no, but it is, it's been they held up. as should. Oh, yeah, really, yeah. Uh, no, it has been held up as an all-time classic, hasn't it? And obviously I the world's biggest A-team fan. So I was like, well, if there's more stuff with George Peppard in, I'll watch that. And I watched it and I was like, huh. and I watched it again, like what, 23 years later and went, huh. yeah. George Peppard was in the A-team. Yeah, it was Hannibal. No shit. <laughs> you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Richie, he was Hannibal in the A-team. How about that? <laughs> Sounded completely different. Yeah, he sounded about what? Well, yeah, he sounded about twenty-five <laughs> years younger, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and some. <laughs> well, no, about right. It was what twenty. So that was sixty-one. Eighteen came out in eighty-three. So it's twenty-two. Yeah, twenty-two yeah. years. Okay. It's a long time of smoking cigars. Probably didn't help. Yeah. Wow. Well, so there you go. Interesting. Actually, there's there've been. Uh, I'd been lucky enough to. Uh, like when I was like flicking through the channels, mostly on a Sunday, if I've got nothing to do, you know, just having a quick flick through the channels. I saw him in an episode of Tales of the, I think it was Tales of, Tales of the Unexpected, the American version. Uh, that was a good episode. That was when he'd just done the, he, I think he was, I think he'd either just done the first season of the eight and was, do, and was doing a guest spot or he'd filmed it and it hadn't been released for a couple of years, like pre eight and it hadn't been released until afterwards. And I also saw him in, um, I don't know, it'd be like like a, an Alfred Hitchcock 30-minute drama or something, like back in the 60s, black and white as well, which was also quite fun. I was just like, I'm having like a George Peppard week here, randomly. Mm. So before we move on to the differences, can we talk briefly about the story and what we thought of the acting within the film? Oh, uh, yeah. Is this a new section or is... Or are you just spitballing now? No, no, no. I just want it because I watched the film and I couldn't couldn't get a storyline from the film. I said, well, where's this going? Why and what's happening? And at the end of it, where's it gone? So I thought maybe the book will shine a bit more light on it. That maybe there'll be be a bit more of a story. No, no, I couldn't find a story. I couldn't. It was just the the random musings of some bloke and his time with some girl. Yeah, but that's why it's a hundred and sixty page. It's a hundred and sixty page book because it was probably just just that, wasn't it? He'd probably written a few pages of something and went, 
I know. I'll just shove a load of this together and see what people say. And everyone went, oh, he's a genius. He's brilliant. He's excellent. And no one went, it's a bit shit, mate. To be honest, it's got, <laughs> it's got, it's got no plot, no substance. No one likes your main character. The other, the rest of the people don't like the geezer because he's an idiot. And like, <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, they, what's his name in it? Peppard's character, Paul Co- something. Kojak, <laughs> Paul Varjak, Co- Paul Varjak, Var- Kojak. Kojak. <laughs> Who loves you, baby? Varjak. He, in the book, Varjak was more geeky. I can't imagine him being much of a lookout or a ladies' man. He was a bit of a, a loner. In today's day and age, he would have been the kind of person that uh, goes to work and plays games on his computer and doesn't really go out much, doesn't really have friends. That's how he came across in the book. Gosh. Just describing me, Richie. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, yes, because of my older name. That's not us in our youth. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but um in the in the film, he was a he was a looker. You could tell he's probably a bit of a ladies man. He, he, he could talk, you know, he just, he knew his way around a lady. Completely different people. I thought yeah, well, no, yeah, but the, the reason for that is, Richie, you've got to beef up this... F- you're going to make this book into a film. You're going to have to do something to it because the book's shit, right? So he's going to have to do something. Because, to be honest, there wasn't there wasn't any romance in the book. Like, I didn't I didn't get not anything... Not till the end. Well, no, not even then, Richie, because don't forget the story... Oh, no, 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 it's the film that had the romance at the end, isn't it? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, but, but that's the whole thing, because at the, the start of the book, it's just him and the barman talking about how they've seen this wooden carving and it has to be her. And I'm like, fucking hell, like, how desperate are people? Yeah, it's weird. Like, how desperate yeah. are people? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, fair enough, to whatever. And then we get told of the story. And I think, to be fair, Richie, I mean, I don't know about you, but me, I've been out with girls who act exactly like her. And like, after, you know, like, like an hour or two hours, I'm like, no, nah, this ain't going to work, is it? You know what I mean? We're two different people. You're a lunatic and I am not desperate. And there we go. So you move on. But I think in the book, it was more, to me, it seemed more of a friendship anyway. Or he was maybe hoping something might happen, but could clearly see she was not interested in the slightest at any point ever because he had no money. Yeah, if nothing else, this film teaches you, don't go chasing people. If someone is interested in you, they will make it obvious. They'll be texting you, they'll be flirting. You will know that they are interested. But if they're keeping you around, knowing you're interested in them, but not giving anything in return, it just means that you're convenient for them in their lifestyle but they don't want anything more from you because if they did like i say they would make it obvious stop chasing people if they want you you wouldn't have to chase them i think what you're trying to say rich is have higher standards that's what you're trying to say is have high because not not so much have higher standards but sometimes you can chase someone and they can give you vibes like they like you and they want you around but doesn't mean that they they want you want you and and if after weeks or months of still chasing someone that you're not getting anywhere you might be time to sit back and go hold on a minute what's going on here i think i think the pacing of the film was better than the book because at least in the film it made it look like they were just friends they were just friends Uh, Because in the book, she's obviously in the relationship with Rusty Trawler. Doesn't that sound like uh, an old broken pickup? So I'm just going to go outside and start up the old Rusty Trawler. Well, it does sound like some some bloke down in Cornwall whose fishing boat's about nine hundred years old, (laughs) but still but 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 still brings the mackerel back in the summer. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Or I'm just off out on the old rusty trawler. Catch that mark. All right, there, <laughs> me lover. And he's also got a second job as a pirate. Well, that's right. Because where do you think, right? Where do you think them pirates of Penzance are from? They're from that there Cornwall. Arr. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, you were saying, sorry, rudely interrupted. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, in the book, I mean, she's very clear. It's very clear she's in a relationship with Rusty Trawler because he's got a load of cash. And then they end up going away, her and her mate and the Latino dude. And Rusty gets beaten up or gets into a fight and ends up in a back brace. And a friend ends up with sunburn. So those two go to Brazil and they come back and they have a falling out, her and her mate. And then she ends up with the Latino geezer and her mate ends up with Rusty Trawler. And then 
obviously uh, the only bit of the film that was remotely interested is when she gets arrested for drug smuggling. That didn't happen in the film. Yeah, it did. They go to the strip club. They <laughs> come back. Hold on a minute. I don't remember this. What? What, you don't remember being oh, in the yeah, strip club? Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richie, yeah. I'm disappointed, Richie, because that's the first thing you should have been mentioning. No, I, I didn't mention it because when she went to take a top off, you didn't see fuck all, so there's nothing worth mentioning. But I don't remember her being arrested. Yeah, they get back to the apartment and... Uh, Paul opens the door and the old Bill put the ankle on him straight away. And then Mr. Yoshimoto was going, Oh, yo, yo, and yo, and yo, and yo. And the police, and then they take him to the police station. But why does she get arrested? In the because film? she's because she's implicated with Sonny Tomato. So, you know, so, the, so, so the, that storyline is the same there. I don't remember that in the film. Fucking hell, what were you doing? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> what I, were you doing? I, I was probably was... I was probably bored. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the total, the end of the film. <laughs> to be fair, I, I, I think I had a game of chess halfway through. Uh, okay, yeah, no, uh, yes, uh, obviously that 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 feared crime lord Sonny Tomato. That I don't care who you are, right? If you go, right, mate, you're gonna have to give me protection money. All right, what's your name, mate? Sonny Tomato. You're just giving him a slap, ain't you? <laughs> it's gonna. <laughs> so I don't care. Your name's what? Oh. Anyway, Audrey Hepburn's character, Go Lightly, she was very similar. There were a lot of parts which were pretty much word for word with the book. They did take yeah. a lot of a uh, lot of dialogue from the book and use it. Oh, at the yeah, start, 100%. At, the, at the start, it was pretty much word for word at the beginning. I thought, oh, this is mm-hmm. just going to follow the book completely then, but it didn't. Well, the party was a bit different because it was more of a gathering of people rather than what it sounded like, some kind of... Uh, officer orgy there's like a load of men and just her which yeah yeah it, it seemed a bit more upper class uh, party in the film in the book it was just yeah did you notice that she had paul's book in the kitchen in the film yeah because yeah well yeah you wouldn't yeah, she, fucking notice she, it reading a book would you you plonker she she put it on the shelf he gave it to her didn't he yeah that's what i mean yeah it was in the kitchen like it was in the kitchen and she like, said when, it'll look good here yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, yeah. that's what I noticed. Yeah, I noticed that. That's okay. just what I noticed. Also, well, that, that's obviously a difference in the see so what they've had to do. They've had to make Paul Varjak not look like a little pecker weedy knacker, ain't they? So, in the in the book, he's just he, he's a struggling uh, he's a struggling writer, an unpublished writer. Uh, and in the movie, he's a is a toy boy published author who. Uh, who who has the pleasure of a woman who gives him cash money so she he can service her and write his stuff? Yes, that was a, d- a strange addition uh, to the story, adding a uh, him being an escort to some woman. Well, yeah, now you see, I thought don't that know myself. Why they did that? Well, okay, I'll tell you why they did that. Right, first of all, it's to give the indication that Paul has a relationship. Okay, so Paul's in a relationship. He's not just chasing after Holly the second he sees her and his feelings develop to a degree that he's prepared to tell the woman who pays him money that he so he can live I don't want your money anymore I want love and okay. that's why it's there that's why it becomes a romantic film yeah yeah but okay ro- yeah ro- ro- uh, romantic drama there's nothing funny about this film no, yeah definitely not no no, not unless you're a racist or some sort of bigot. Maybe, a, maybe, maybe a paedophile. I would do the paedophile, the paedophile husband. Oh, let's talk. Jesus. Let's talk about yeah. him. He appeared in both the film and the book. Doc Go Lightly. Doc Go Lightly turns up to Varjak and says, uh, "I need a friend. I need a friend. Can you help me out?" He explains his story. Yeah, I married her when she was fourteen. I think. Yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah, right, maybe yeah. there was a mention of her being 13 when they met. I don't know. But they married when she was 14. And uh, Varjak's like, yeah, I'll help you. I'll believe your story. I mean, was that acceptable in the 50s? This, this is me. This is Lula May. And near my children. In the book, <laughs> his children are older than her. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Which and meant he was probably in. It went, when they first met, he was probably in his late thirties, maybe about the same age as us now. And she was fourteen. And and Varjak doesn't question it. Says, yeah, I'll be your friend. <laughs> That's the last person you want to be a friend. That's worse than Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> 
going to start calling and referring to him as Doc Go Lightly from now on. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so so we had racism, we had sexism, homophobia, and paedophilia all in the space yeah. of 160 pages. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's a classic. It's a, for all of those reasons. It makes it a classic, yes. <laughs> So if I ever need to write a novel that I want to become a classic, I just need to offend everybody. Yes. Now my uh, my favourite bit was um, was after she got rid of Doc. She went right. We're going out drinking, and I don't want to go home until I'm blind drunk. And they go back to the apartment, and she's run out of booze. And she goes, "You got any whiskey upstairs?" Oh, and he's like, mm. "And she's like, I'll pay you. You, you should be used to taking money off women by now. <laughs> <For sake. laughs> that was a killer line, that was. <laughs> Probably the best bit of the whole film. My favourite bit was when they were actually in Tiffany's. I, enjoyed, yeah, I, enjoyed I don't know too. why. I, I quite enjoyed the bit where they're looking for a gift for $10. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, and the look on the geezer's face is like, you sure? Yeah, the, the bit where them in, in the book where she they decided to go steal something from the dollar store or whatever. In the film, they made a big song and dance about it. They tried to make it funny by doing loads of different weird shit that wasn't really funny at all. No, no, I know what you mean. And then in the book, it's like about ten seconds, and yeah. it was like it, it just is what it is. <laughs> it's stealing something for a laugh. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think the bits that they added in the film actually were decent that weren't in the book like the tiffany scene thought that was pretty cool and the, probably the the details like you know getting the ring out of the cracker jack box and stuff like that again it's funny just made me smile a little bit and it was probably the book's long enough that you've got to use all of it i think i was a bit disappointed that the um joe bell the bartender was in it for about a second considering like he's like one of the main characters in the book yeah he's one of the main characters and he? he's almost like the, the third main character yeah. I don't even remember him in the film. No, no, it's when he's, uh, it Paul, uh, Paul's in the pub after she's been arrested and, and he's in the bar and there's just a picture of, well, just like the barman stood behind the bar and you're like, oh, it's Joe Bell. And then he gets on the phone to OJ Berman and it's like, it's Paul. He's like, Paul who? He's Paul Varjak, V-A-R-J-E-K. And he's like, Paul who? He's like, Fred, baby. He's like, hey, Fred, baby. <laughs> Cause he just gets called Fred. And to be honest, I don't even think, I don't even think, uh, in the book, I can't remember him being called Paul at all in the book. I think it was just literally Fred. I don't think he's referred to by his name at all. I don't remember a whole lot about any of the film or the book. It was, um, yeah, it's not, it's not one I'm going to go back to. No, and of course, of course, the biggest difference is at the end where she legs it to Brazil, and never to be seen again. And in Hollywood, you can't have that because uh, you can't have that. So they <laughs> smooch, and she stays but, yeah. and faces and faces racketeering charges and, f- and finds the cat immediately. He had to search yes. for fucking ages, and then when he found it, it fucked off and lived, started living with someone else. A little knacker. Yeah, the ginger twat. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. it covered, I think, all the different. I mean, there wasn't a load of differences. But um, what do you take away so if, from this film? If you can take anything away, what could you take away? Uh, that it's racist, sexist, it covers paedophilia, drug running uh, and promiscuity. Which, All of our fair, favourite things. Well, other than the like the pedo bit, but I was about to say, you would like, if you go, mate, this is from, there's drug running, there's, there's, ho- there's you know, there's, there's gay bashing, there's... there's <laughs> 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 there's slags there's, there's <laughs> fucking police raids you go oh yeah go watch that and i but then you go it's yeah. breakfast at tiffany's you go no i mean that would that would have been the best way to sell the film wouldn't it back in the 50s right i tell you what i tell you what, the, the biggest takeaway for me was the fashion i thought that everyone was dressed fantastically if that is an actual word, but just like the coats, the suits, the dresses, just everything. It was like, that must have been the best time to be alive. Because even like, even like the crappiest clothes look brilliant. Yeah. But they weren't working class, were they? I mean, if you go into different parts of New York or the, the you know, the, the less affluent places, you just mm. see people with like a cloth shit on and <laughs> loin cloths. <laughs> <laughs> fig leaves <laughs> <laughs> it was just that part of New York 
Yeah, everyone was dressed really well. That was my takeaway. The, the wardrobe yeah. department was very good. Oh, I also liked. Uh, I also liked when uh, Paul was splitting up with his uh, sugar mama, and he just like opened the cupboard. He just thinks it's a cupboard, and it's like it's like a, a whole another bedroom just full of clothes. You're like shit. She was spending some serious poke on this geezer to get some. He must have been giving her some serious poke. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, do I have any takeaways? No, I don't. I don't. I don't have anything to take away from this film. If you ask me in two years' time, what do you remember about the film? You don't even remember the end two days ago? You don't remember it now? <laughs> I, I, I even watched the end. I do remember the end because I watched it earlier. They're in the back of the car and they, they're talking and it, she got rid of the cat. It's just all very boring. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Out of ten, uh, both the book and the film, I'd give a three. Ooh, that's harsh criticism there, uh, Richie. The body armor, I give it a five. Yeah, both. They can have a five each. Neither was better mm. than the other. No, no. I, I probably agree. read the book quicker than I watched the film. So, in that respects, the book was probably better. Actually, no, that's not true. No, no, no. Hang on, that's not true. I love George Peppard. The film was better. I, I, I stick with my three and three. But, okay, right in. What about recasting? I mean, if we're going to recast, we're going to have to remake the film. If we're going to remake the film, there's so much going to have to change. I mean, it's, you, 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 it's going to be a different film, isn't it? No, it stays exactly the same. I don't you, think you can get away with it. I don't think you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> of course no, you can. You wouldn't be, yeah. be allowed. No, of course you could. I think for, for this episode... Oh, go on then. We're going to change the film. We're going to change the film. Oh, right, okay. We, we, when we change the film, we're going to change the cast as well. So we need to talk about what we're going to change in the film and the cast that we're going to use. So I'm going to let you okay, start, then. Phil. You can start with who would you cast for this new and improved version okay. of Breakfast at Tiff's? And that's okay, what it'll so, be called, Breakfast at oh, Tiff's. Right, okay, dokie. So... For Holly Go Lightly, either Jennifer Lawrence, uh, because she's... I was thinking Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, because she's dead fit. Right, so I can I can kind <laughs> of have it, right. Or, and she's not my cup of tea, but I think looks-wise, similar, the accent and all that, you could have uh, Gal Gadot as well play the role and you'd probably have something quite similar to what you have with Audrey Hepburn. I don't know who that is. I'm going to have to type her. Wonder Woman. I didn't watch it. Okay, I'll type her in anyway then. Gal Gadot. I've definitely spelled that wrong. I think she's French anyway. She's kind of got a similar look, so it would probably work if anyone really cared about her. Oh, yeah. Ooh, okay. Okay. She looks a little bit like Audrey Hepburn. That's why I suggested it, Richie. Okay, that's a good shout. I like that. Oh, good. Okay, that's good. So, have you got any anyone to add? Um, for the female lead. For the female, I don't, I, I don't think so. Okay. Um, maybe Summer Glau. Oh, I don't know her. Are you going to make me look up porn actresses now? No. She was the she was the Terminator in um okay, in the series. Yeah, no, that's not going to work, is it? Oh, probably not. No, okay. she's probably too. Uh, no, because whoever it's got to be, it's got to be like nineteen. And Jennifer that's Lawrence true. is far too old now. Yeah, and she, no, Summer Glau's yeah. a lot older now, so she's not going to work yeah. either. Yeah, okay, yeah, but if it's a completely different film, there can be a completely different age. Richie, this Emma is Watson. what I said. Uh, because she, she can ha- be glamorous. Yeah, is she hot enough though, mate, to have all that aggro? Come on now! I'm just asking the question. Come on! Emma Watson! God damn. Uh, uh. Okay, then what about men? Then what about men? What about your mate, Zach Efron? Yeah, yeah, Zach Efron would work. Channing Tatum. But this is the age thing though, isn't it? You've got to you've got to be like you've got to be careful about the age, maybe, perhaps, do you? Don't you? Does it really matter? You could have uh, Russell Brand. <laughs> yeah, could, yeah. Oh, no. actually, you know, you know who I think would be good. Uh, again, it's a little bit old now. Well, probably he's a lot older now. But someone like either James McAvoy or Matt Boomer. But Matt Boomer is probably like in his mid forties now, so it wouldn't really work as well. But I don't really know that many young, attractive men. 
Um, me, I could do it. No, Richie. Maybe from maybe from the neck down. <laughs> Hold on a minute, you cheeky girl. I've got, got an amazing face. It's just covered with a beard at the moment. Um, I really don't know. I, don't, I really don't know who I'd choose for okay, so, a geezer. So who, okay, so who are so who, who, who going to pick for the racist uh, man who lives upstairs? Um, the, the Japanese guy. Yeah, Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Give him some false teeth and put some sellotape up over his eyes to pull them back. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be Japanese. Uh, it could just be a black man with a Japanese name. Okay. And go, right. hey, motherfucker. Come get one in here. Forget yeah, your because, key, bitch. Yeah, because that, that, that part was meant to be funny. That was clearly supposed to be funny, but it wasn't. Kevin Hart could bring actual humour to the film. That's, that's, that's why I said it. Yeah, that that could work. I can't think of any funny Japanese people, so yeah. Uh, well, Are Japanese Lee, people funny? But, but, well, isn't Bobby Lee Korean? I don't know. Oh, what about uh, the geezer? The geezer from The Hangover. I like him. Which one? The Japanese geezer or the Chinese geezer. Oh, Harold and Kumar. He was in Harold and Kumar. He was Harold. No, no. That's he would work him. as well, though. He would work as well. Yeah, but he's a bit young. You want them to be a bit older, don't you? No, he's quite old now. I saw him in a film not too long back and he played the father of someone and I thought, fuck it, oh, oh my God. Oh, uh, okay. We're, we're getting old. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Yeah, no, he would be good. I, I would like him in it. I mean, the, the, this whole episode, we, we, I think we, we're, tr- we're treading on thin ice with this episode because, I mean, is he Japanese? Is he Chinese? And I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to be Asian, that person. The it's Asian like, man. The Asian man. The, the Actually, Asian man. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know who I'd want? Okay. This is. This is. I am the. I am the executive producer. And what I say goes. I want the emotional damage man, in it. Or or Uncle Roger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Either emotional damage man or Uncle Roger. You see how our casting's yeah. just turned to YouTube Shorts. <laughs> and that's how we just start casting people from our YouTube short. I actually, so I actually sit down and watch a lot of Uncle Roger's stuff. It's brilliant. Aye, aye, he's, aye. Ja- he's, he's, he's Chinese. He's not Japanese, but I'm pretty sure he's Chinese. Yeah, he is. He's definitely Chinese. But um, it's a good job we haven't got millions of listeners because we would have some complaints this week. Yes, yes, <laughs> of, of of cultural reapproach creation or whatever yeah, yeah i just want to state for the record neither phil or myself are racists in any way we just speak for yourself don't know, we just don't know <laughs> how, to, how to approach the subject on in a correct <laughs> manner indeed yes yes indeed so th- those are the th- th- uh, some of the characters we change uh, when it comes to the film i would want to add some sort of a storyline yes Yes, I would like a storyline as well. That would have been good, rather than the bird goes out and gets pissed up and then yeah. gets arrested for drug smuggling. I mean, it would it would it would basically be it would ba- it would follow the basic rules of any romantic comedy, I suppose. It's the guy meets girl, guy likes girl, guy tries to get girl, which is what this is. But it's like yeah, but what 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 you're missing is the components that they bring in in the 1980s two other people so you so you've got you've got the boy and the girl who like each other or one likes the other the girl's got a friend who tries to help set them up the bloke's got a friend who goes forget about her and move on to somebody else and then there's a load of serious and misfortune of it misfortunate events and then they end up together at the end big argument because something happened and they, they all they both exactly. separate from each other because well it's just isn't gonna fucking work and then the mate says well if you really love her you go you're gonna chase her down and then he goes and chases her down and oh like i can't croc- believe her. I was like, like, like in crocodile dundee <laughs> <laughs> just like in not, crocodile is, dundee is that not what happens yeah he decides he's going to leave and she chases him down to the subway and they pass the message all the way on down the thingy and he passes the message all the way back and then he climbs on everyone and they smooch and then he stabs her. With his dick. <laughs> right, so yeah. Basically, you just have to follow the, the same kind of rules as any other rom-com and have 
proper humour in it and relatable characters. I did not relate to either of those characters. No, not at all. No, 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 no. Like, what you need is, like, a couple who live in the apartment block who um, either always at each other's throats or are always shagging or something like that for a bit of comic relief. You can't just rely on the racist neighbour upstairs. What soundtrack are we going to add to our film? I don't think Moon River is going to work with, with well, this. Deep Blue something, Breakfast at Tiffany's. So we're going to go with indie rock then. Breakfast at Tiffany's by um, the... Deep Blue something. Yeah, that would be the, obviously the uh, kind of like theme, bringing in the film, maybe going out as well, like the intro and the outro. Did you know, I think Audrey Hepburn's got more credits on a soundtrack than she does as an actress, and it's from that song. Moon River? Yeah, from that film. Oh, did she sing that? Yeah, so that's so when that's played in films and stuff, and they're using that, she's got more credits as being on a soundtrack of films oh. than she has as being an actress. Did not know that. That's interesting. Is mm. it interesting? It's something. Well, it's something you didn't know, and now you do. Ask me if I remember it tomorrow. You don't remember her getting arrested in the film, Richie, and you watched it two days ago. I, I didn't. I didn't think she was as attractive as everybody makes her out to be yes and no again it's about the times isn't it i suppose in the 50s 60s yeah yeah i mean let's face it richie right you know you know when you go around one of those old manor houses and you see the oil paint into these people and you're like what fucking stone were they hit with when they were born because they are the (laughs) ugliest people you've ever seen in your life ain't they you know what i mean it's you know obviously people get better looking as uh, time goes on but yeah no i think she, she was attractive don't get me wrong I, I, I thought she was attractive like you know she's not jennifer lawrence is she no no so yeah i think that pretty much covers all of it i don't really mm. think there's much else we can no. say about the film to be honest we spent 20 minutes talking about what we'd do better we never do that so, <laughs> no. what, so w- w- would you recommend the uh do i need to ask well i would recommend it If someone had said, what's the oldest film you've ever watched? And I would say, it's probably Breakfast at Tiffany's, give it a watch. But that's about it. See, I'd say, oh, probably Breakfast at Tiffany's, don't don't watch it though. I don't know. I mean, you could watch it on a Sunday morning if you're hungover. I mean, I suppose you could come at it from the angle of watch it and look how things have changed over the years from how things used to be then to how things are now. It's yes. nice to be able to look back and say a bit of a history lesson, if you like. Yes. People people were allowed to be that much of a cunt back then and get away with it. No. You get cancelled now. Or uh, sexually assaulted, if you behave like yeah. she does. Yeah. I'm not saying, you know, but... It, can kind of encourage that kind of thing, can't it? Yeah, especially when Mr. Go Likely is marrying a 14-year-old. Yes. So, yes, I wouldn't recommend this. Don't go out and watch this. I don't really have anything else to say. I think I think this has been a short episode. I think we're pretty much done, aren't we, Phil? Yeah, or, except to say the book that I got with this, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, uh, it was a it was like a double uh, header. Actually, In Cold Blood is a 1967 film with an X rating. Mm. And uh, I'll give you the quick movie thing. Two ex-cons murder a family in a robbery attempt before going on the run from the authorities. The police try to piece together the details of the murder in an attempt to track down the killers. That sounds quite exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I'm sold. Yeah. So, uh, I hope you all at home have enjoyed this episode uh, more than we did. Yeah. If you did enjoy it or you enjoy anything we do, please drop us a like, a sub, wherever you're listening to us, whether that be Spotify or YouTube or iTunes. Is it iTunes or Apple? Apple Podcasts. In fact, if you are on Apple Podcasts, give us a, write, a, a review as well. And you can do that on YouTube because it helps with the algorithms and all that bullshit. Mm-hmm. So please Tell do that. Friend. Tell a friend. Give us some suggestions. I just want to shout out Ben Mowbray. He sent me a link earlier with some recommendations. Yes, Ben. So, yeah. Thank you for that, Ben. And Cheers, Ben. Yeah, cheers, Ben. Bless your fucking heart. And... Yeah, um, I'm missing something. If you want to follow us also, we've got a website, which will be in the You've links. And I feel like I'm missing something. No, 
No. Just the will to live, I think, after this just episode. Just the will to live, yeah. just the will to live. So thank yeah. you, everybody, for listening. If indeed you still are, I've been Richie. I've been Philip. This has been the Adapted to Screen podcast. Yeah. Breakfast at Tiffany's, the book, verse Breakfast at Tiffany's, the film. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> If I could find a real life place like Tiffany's, then I'd buy some furniture and give the cat a name. Tiffany's? You mean the jewelry store? Don't you just love it? Love what? Tiffany's. I do believe love is found Andy Hardy. I'd marry you for your money in a minute. You marry me for my money? In a minute. I don't want to put you in a cage. I want to love you. Hi. Hi. What you doing?